Well, hello to the yokers, the far and the wides, and the something. I don't know where I was going. Though. High in the deep. High in the deep. The, the, the highs and the lows and the, the valleys and the mountains. and the... Amen. Yes. Hello. Yes. Hello. God created the hills, but he also created the valleys. Remember that, guys. He's with you in the valley. Amen. Amen. All right, but here we are, everybody. Uh, bonus episode of Yoke Talk. What is? What are we talking about today? Who knows? Guess we'll find out. We're gonna be. We're gonna be finding out as we find roll it along. Out so together, we're gonna need your help as well <clears throat> uh, uh, to uh, to help us on on this journey that we are all on together yes. as we move towards moving to a new day for the Yoke Talk. If you guys uh, missed any updates, we are moving to Fridays at four thirty. We're gonna be streaming from four thirty to five thirty right here. And so, um, yeah, all you podcasters out there and stuff like that, if you uh, usually listen to us on a Wednesday, well, I'm sorry, but I'm sorry, you'll you'll have to listen to some things you that were four still, days before. You could still listen to us on a Wednesday if you really want, but you could it just you might could. be a little. You could listen to us on older. Saturday. Yeah, and 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 having it on Fridays is going to be super beneficial for us. We talked about this a little bit last week, but we had. Uh, a lot of times we'd get off on Tuesday and then every single big gaming news would happen on Tuesday night and Wednesday morning. And we found that most gaming news happens like Tuesday, well, probably Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, I think are the biggest days. But it like starts Tuesday afternoon. It starts Tuesday mm-hmm. at one o'clock. Like <laughs> it's literally all the developers and every company is like, okay, okay, Yoke talks over. All right, let's do this. And they start co- coming up with crazy stuff and we don't get to talk about it for an entire week. And then once we do talk about it, you guys are like, I've already heard about this. People have already sounded off about this, their, their thoughts and things like that. We'd like to be one of the first And so we are going to be doing 4.30 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, Yoke Talk on Fridays. From now on. So get ready. Yes. Wonderful, wonderful. And don't forget, this this channel actually goes live every day now, Monday through Friday at 4.30 Eastern Standard Time. So make sure to be here. It's a great time. It's a great time. So Excellent. Yeah. So we wanted to do a bonus episode today, kind of fill in the gap a little bit, you know, not leave you guys hanging for like a week and a half without any Yoke Talk. Um, so we were hoping there would be like kind of one big gaming news topic we could kind of sit on today, you know, <laughs> and then kind of chill with just casual conversation or whatever. But there's really not a whole lot right now. You want to know why? Because it's not Tuesday afternoon yet. I guarantee That's right. you. I guarantee you something will get announced this afternoon and we'll talk I'm about it on keep- Friday. I'm going to keep live updates on my phone right now. Some live, gaming news because I, I guarantee you Pastor Boss. Some, something, something's going to happen. Something's going to happen. I don't know what yet, but, but something will happen. Uh, as a way to uh, fill the space a little bit. This might not go an hour. It might be a little shorter today. We'll see. We're just going to ride it out. Uh, but if you guys uh, have any questions, you know, we usually don't do Q&A too much, but bonus episode we do what we want if you guys have any questions uh or topics you think you you think topics you think might be uh interesting for us to talk about in any way uh please go ahead and ask them now in the chat if you're here with us live these can be topics about gaming topics about life whatever you want to ask ask questions whatever it might be ask away might be yes but um yeah, I guess we'll uh, we'll just roll the intro and we'll see where the Lord leads us. Amazing. Well, Pastor Buzz, I, uh, uh, I don't I don't think we asked. Uh, how are you? How are you doing today? I'm doing pretty good. Uh, Jackie Jazz asked, "How is a bonus stream?" Because yeah, but then he said, "Oh," so I think he I think he heard what we said. Oh, okay. Feels bad. Sorry. Anyways, I'm doing pretty good. I'm, doing pretty good. I'm, a, <clears throat> I'm a little bit tired. Um, How many toes do each of us have? That's a personal question, okay? I have five each. It's a personal question. And I'm going to decline to answer. Seraph has five each as well. I've seen his feet before. No, you don't. Anyway. <laughs> Anyways, um, so, uh, so, so what was I going to say? I completely forgot. I don't know. Oh, I'm doing pretty good. I'm a little bit oh, tired. Yeah. Um, I'm not going to lie. I, I had trouble waking up this morning. I've been doing really good with waking up. Um, but this morning at six o'clock in the morning, 
my wonderful kitten decided to start meowing for no reason at all. Then she went in her litter box. Okay. She went in her litter box. She didn't go to the bathroom. She's just scraping. I think she does it to get me out of bed. I'm not going to lie. Because right when I sat up in bed and walked over to the door to where her bedroom is, because my kitten has a bedroom. Yes, she does. She's a, she, yes, she's spoiled. a little princess. I know. Spoiled. She is spoiled. And uh, she just walked right over to the door and looked up at me. I'm like, okay, now I'm out of bed. What do you want? Attention. She didn't want anything. She just wanted attention. So I went back to bed and she started, went back in her litter, litter box and started scraping again and uh, woke my, my wife up at five in the morning. So, you know, we're, we're both a little bit exhausted, but that's okay. That's okay. That's but that time change too. I love my cat. Yeah. Maybe it's a time change. I don't know. Maybe she's all screwed up. Ella's confused. I don't know. She she, I, I'm confused. I'll be completely <laughs> honest. When the time change happened, guys, on oh, it happened on Saturday, obviously, but on Sunday well, was it Sunday? No, morning. Sunday morning. So, Sunday morning. Okay, so all day Sunday, guys. I would literally be my wife. We were watching some uh, Marvel movies, and I looked at the clock, and it said uh, four o'clock on my phone. I was like, "Yeah, that sounds about right." Half hour later, look at the clock on my wall. It said three thirty. Yeah, sounds about right. Didn't even. Didn't even make the connection that I went backwards in time. <laughs> so, but yeah. Excellent. How are you doing though? I'm doing pretty good. Pretty good. I streamed last night for the first time in ages. It was great. You okay. streamed? I did. Why did I not see a notification? I don't know, but I did. Streamed last night. I'm so sad. I played uh, Outer Wilds again, trying to uh, continue in that game. It's so cool. It's so cool. Like, it's so cool. Like, if you guys have the chance to play Outer Wilds and you like you like a game where you can kind of discover the story and the mechanics on your own. It's so good. So good. If you like direction in your games, don't play it. There's no direction. But I I, I don't mind no direction. What I hate is no direction when there's supposed to be a direction. So, for example, Sekiro. No direction at all. None. Can't even find where to go in the game. And then it says you have to beat certain bosses that you can't even get to unless you have like three things, but it doesn't tell you the three yeah. things that you need. Outer Wilds allows you to uh, it allows you to discover hints. It's about it's where explorable. You need to go. It's explorable. And that's okay. I'm okay with explorable. But when it gets to be too in depth, yeah, it gets a little difficult for yeah. me. But I wanted yeah. to pull a question from the chat that I saw from then zero man, or maybe it's then no man. I don't know. Then no man. Who knows? Uh, but he asked, what's your dream game? If you could design it with any budget you'd want, what games would you draw inspiration from? I love this question. I love this question because I actually have what I think is a pretty cool answer. <laughs> and uh, honestly, I don't think about this very often. I used to. I used to. Uh, but I haven't thought about it in ages. But I read this question and I immediately thought of this. Um, when I was younger, and I, I'll still say that I want this because it's stinking legit. But when I was younger, uh, I remember as a, as a, you know, a young budding gamer you know, starting to get into different things and uh, new genres and stuff. I remember playing like first person shooters and be like, this is really fun. And then I played real time strategy games and I was like, this is really cool and fun. And I always wanted one that was like two in one where it was like this massive game, massive game where all of the little units in your strategy game are actual players. And then huh. there's just like one oversight strategy person like giving commands and like telling people where to go and, and what to do and stuff like. Uh, not planet side, not planet side, because We've planet side doesn't have that, that overhead <clears throat> kind of idea. You, 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 you and I played Planet Side 2, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah and then yeah, yeah. Okay. something something I also wanted uh, was, I think this is where the difficulty 
comes in to some extent. And so I guess this wouldn't make it to where all of the units are play are player characters uh, because there was there would have to be some for you to take control of. But I want to I want to be able to as the overhead guy to take control of any unit if I want and play them for a little bit. Hmm. And be like, all right, I'm going to be this Marine guy and go into the base. Or I'm going to take control of this tank and sh- shoot up this hill. Like, I just think it'd be really cool. <laughs> that sounds interesting. That sounds pretty neat. That sounds pretty neat. I honestly, I've had multiple thoughts about this before. And these are going to sound like ideas, but they're, they're just ideas, right? They're not even things that I've thought about. But like when the division came out, Right before it came out, I should say that like years before it came out because they announced it way too early. Thank you, Ubisoft. Anyways, it changed completely. But what my initial idea of what the division was supposed to be was you were supposed to have essentially, I thought, like groups of people that were essentially like clans. Like I was always, I always enjoyed like clan based games. Like, like you have a team of people to work with. And I always wanted, and you guys are going to be like, but Rust has it. I'm not talking about a Rust type of game where you guys have a base essentially and you can fortify it, have people defending it and stuff like that. And other people can come and do that. But there's other stuff as well that's in the game that's like objective base. So Valheim. Stuff like that. No, (laughs) not even that, because that's not even PvP at that point. There's PvP, but it's like 10, it's like what, 5v5 or something like that? Valheim plus Rust. Um, No, it's different. And and I'm not even saying buildable. I I don't know. I don't, like I said, they're just ideas. And the other thing, and I've I've come, this is, this would be really difficult. This would be really difficult. I have dimples that form a triangle. (laughs) Right back to <laughs> Fre- freckles. I think it's I think it's the here, oh, freckles. here, and then here. This is, I think oh, that's like- the triangle. <laughs> oh, oh, there too. Yeah, yeah. No, well, there's mul- there's like there's multiple. There's more than just three, but, it, I, but, I have- but there's two here and there's one. Uh, here we go. Here we go. Here we go. There. Right there. Anyways, anyways, cannot unsee. <laughs> anyways now, now i'm gonna think of a triangle every time i look at my face um anyways this is something that i always thought would be cool but i don't know how it would be done i want an mmo based on the bible but okay. here's the thing here's but the a thing, cool though. one here's the thing think about it this way right how can you do that i don't want it to be like i don't want it to be first of all cheesy right i also want it to be solid theology how can you have a Goliath fight when literally it's one stone that sinks into his forehead and then David walks up and yeah. chops his head off? Not really you uh, can't, much for game. You can't have, right? there's no, there's no mechanic, mm-hmm. right? Uh, King Eglon, you know, Ahud just walks up and jabs his sword into his stomach. His sword gets stuck and he walks out of the room like a boss. Like, it, like, like, yeah. So then, so then I started thinking about like Harry Potter MMOs, right? I think that would be cool to an extent, but the Harry Potter world only goes so far. It doesn't go too, too far. So then you think of the Lord of the Rings MMO and they already did that and it failed. So, you know, <laughs> and they're coming out with the new one. They're rebooting it and it's not the same developer or anything. They are going to reboot it. It's a, you know, it's, it's, it's a, it's a work in progress. But the thing is, is like, I want just a solid MMO that's based off the Bible, but it just would not work. Yeah. I don't know if that's, it just uh, wouldn't. That's possible. Yeah. It just wouldn't work. Because all of the bosses, they they die immediately. Like, let's be honest. Let, let's be honest. Like, like God, like, if he's on your side, you, you don't need mechanics. That is the mechanic. He is the mechanic. God is the mechanic in the game. That that's essentially you know you'd have a button that's like God rock throw, <laughs> dead. Like I don't know. So you know I had those thoughts before, and I, I've thought of through biblical examples. Like, what do you do? Go against a Roman army or something like that? You know, yeah. and, 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 you know, and and you already know the story too, you know? So it's like, you know what's going to happen. The Bible kind of, you know, there's spoilers. So I don't know. Yeah. I don't know what I do. I just don't know if there's like very much there you could turn into a game, unfortunately. Yeah. Yeah. So hmm. it would be, it would be interesting. Your, your freckles are a constant reminder of the Trinity. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh man, let's see. Did anybody else put anything? Uh, up can you chat? see my freck? Wait, can you see my freckles now? Oh! <laughs> <laughs> I apologize, everyone, for what just uh, what, for what just <laughs> penetrated your your eyeballs. <laughs> uh, oh goodness! If you guys have any other questions, uh, feel free to uh, put them in the chat. We'll we'll answer them best we can. Gaming questions, life questions. I do have a, another game I wanted to talk about. If you don't have anything, um, <clears throat> sure, go on ahead. Yeah, so I played a, a new game uh, the other day called uh, century from the ashes and it was a game they showed uh, at the game awards and that's when i got really hyped for it and went and signed up for the beta uh and then okay. they, they gave me access to the beta and uh it's a game where you're a dragon rider and you just pvp combat other dragon riders that actually doesn't it's sound bad. so sick. Wait, that was one of my ideas. Okay, it's already a game. Okay, it's already a game. And they already tried to do this, but it failed. Skyrim or any Elder Scrolls, really, that's Skyrim or better. But mixed with, not an MMO, so not Fallout 76, but mixed. So it's kind of like, um, like a Borderlands multiplayer. Okay. That would be sick. Harder enemies, more enemies as more people come in. You can go anywhere on the map that you want to. I think that that's the thing that Borderlands doesn't have. You can only go anywhere on the map in that zone. Mm -hmm. Whereas Skyrim is just, you know, Elder Scrolls, just an open world. That would be so, that would be legit with like, oh man, I know there's mods for it and stuff, but it doesn't do it justice yeah, like yeah. that. Yeah. So that would cool. be cool. But anyways, continue. Yeah. So that sounds really cool though. It's so cool. It's so, so fun. So it's like, it's literally what I just described. It's just dragon rider PVP combat. Like, so you, you fly on your dragon and you fight other dragon riders. It's like, think of it like this. It's almost like, like a space, like a PVP space sim where there's like two teams of like, like, ships in space fighting it's it plays kind of like that but dragons so <laughs> i'm trying to think are you gonna stream this i might i might is it is it a more than one oh well it's in beta right now and you had to probably sign you had to sign up for it but it's said. multiplayer so, yeah. okay okay that's interesting can you have teams yep mm -hmm. is it like team deathmatch yep mm-hmm that's that honestly just like the main game mode is just team deathmatch. Yeah. That sounds like a wonderful it's idea. Like uh, the, the, sorry, the, oh, the dragon flying. They nailed it. Like they really? nailed it. Like it feels amazing. Like you have an accelerate button and like a break button. So it's like kind of weird to get used to, but it like once you start getting the hang of it, like it feels good. <laughs> <A> break button. <laughs> and like, well, he like, he spreads out his wings and he slows down. Like, <laughs> cool. so it's, really, it's really cool. cool and then like so your drag your different dragons have different abilities uh and like your dragon rider has abilities so like they can like hold up like a, like a thing that puts a bunch of smoke out and it's like a smoke screen or they can okay. they can do whatever so like it's just it's really really fun and cool <laughs> I, just, I don't know how awesome. long it'll be fun for but it's really <laughs> cool that sounds pretty neat. But that sounds what were you neat. saying? <clears throat> I was just saying Techie had a question. And he said, do you guys honestly think that we'll get a Wii Sports or Wii Sports Resort game for the Switch at some point? Um, Here, here's, here's, I don't think so. I feel like they would have done it already. Yeah, here's, Wii Sports, and Wii Sports was sold with the Wii, first of all. Wii Sports was not supposed to be as popular as it was, in my opinion. It was so popular because it was new, it added movement. But what mm -hmm. Wii Sports was supposed to do, it was supposed to show you how the Wii worked. The Wii U even had a game that came out. Um, oh, what was it called? It, was, it had um, like Link in it for one of for parts of it. It was um, I can't remember the. the oh. It was like my Nintendo World or something like that. Yeah, something like that. Nintendo or, Land or Nintendo, Nintendo Land. Land. Yeah, that's it. So, so essentially, though these games were supposed to show you the mechanics and the movement and things like that of what the console can do. It's kind of like PlayStation uh, when they came out with the the little guys. It, I can't. 
I can't remember any of the names of anything, but it's supposed to show you what the console has the ability to do, essentially. What can the controllers do and things like that. Wii Sports was just so popular. They came out with Wii Sports Resort a couple of years later. Like, to be honest, that's that's what it did. Um, <clears throat> and the, the Nintendo Switch, you had, uh, what was it called? Switch Go or something One, like two, that? Switch. One, two, switch. I don't know where I'm going with all these names. Anyways, so you had one, two, switch. And that was supposed to show you all of the different abilities that the switch has. Uh, yeah, playroom. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, everybody, for giving me help in all of my my trivial trials that I'm going through right trivial now. Trivial trials. Wow. Trivial trials. Get some alliteration uh, up in here. Hey. <laughs> Sounded uh, like a sermon. <laughs> it's like a sermon point. Today, we're going to talk about trivial trials. And this is my first point. <laughs> my Tri- first point is one, trials. two, switch. Anyways, so one, two, switch, though, like it had like the uh, the duel, right? You had the, the cowboy duel where it would say, you know, oh, yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. It, it, whatever it draw. was. Yeah, draw. And it would say weird, weird things, too. It wouldn't even say draw. It'd be like lasagna, right? And you would if you if you drew the. The controller, it, you lost because it didn't say draw. It would say weird stuff like that, and so um, and the the baby crying one, I think, was oh, yeah. one of them. I never had it, but um, I don't think a lot. Of I heard did. about it though. Yeah, no, it didn't take off as well. And to be honest, those functions that that game showed did not really show any functions that you use in any games on a Switch. Yeah. I'll be completely honest. Mm-hmm. Uh, don't get me wrong, Switch is still an amazing system, which I'll talk about my amazing system oh, later. I forgot about that. Um, <laughs> But uh, but yeah. So I, I don't think we'll get uh, a Wii Sports or a Wii Sports Resort. If we did, I'd be very surprised because I'll be honest. I played Wii Sports. You're gonna get a kick out of this, Seraph. I played Wii Sports like a month ago. <laughs> I set up my Wii U <laughs> and I just to play I feel Skyward like you probably Sword. Told me that, but just just to play Skyward Sword in my living room, I set up my Wii U and I put in Wii Sports and I bowled. One round, and I put my controller down, and I turned off my Wii U, and I said, I'm good. Like, it's kind of like when Tony Hawk's Pro Skater 1 and 2 came out. I was so excited. I played it for like an hour, and I was like, I should not have spent $50 on this game that I played hundreds of hours on when I was a kid. It was all the nostalgia, the music, which they changed the music and stuff, which kind of was sad. But the thing... Yeah. Yeah. But anyways, uh, so the, the thing is though, like I, I just, I don't, I, it, it would be more of a nostalgia factor, but I don't think there's, I don't think there's a reason to do it. And my wife says we sports resort again. It, Yo, Wii honestly, sports resort was great. We sports resort was, it was really great. Good. Like it was, it was really yeah. good. The basketball was fun. The the the, the wave riding was the fun. Fencing. Oh yeah, the wakeboarding. The fencing. The fencing was really fun. The archery. Ping pong. Even just the, the archery like, was so even, good. Even just the running. Like you put it in your pocket and you just run across the island. That's right. I remember that. It was just fun. run across the island. <laughs> was, yeah. So I don't think we'll ever get that again. And you already kind of have uh, also like like think talking about the running and the the Wii Fit. You you already have the the ring. Yeah, ring or fit. whatever it's, ring, ring ring fit, fit kind of filled so. the the Wii Sports void. I think. Yeah. Party at our. We don't even own Wii Sports Resort. We have Wii Sports, the tennis. You know. I remember when like we thought we had like like swing. Do you guys remember when the Wii came out and people's screens were breaking and stuff like that because people wouldn't put on the strap or the strap would break. Uh, when if when we've oh, it was so good. I I saw a video one time. I actually, have kid. Wii straps on my Vive controllers. Uh, <laughs> yes, you do. You do. Oh wait, we like actual Wii straps yep. or just straps? You Wii, put Wii, Wii straps, straps on. Yep, that's great. Anyways, uh, I remember watching a video on YouTube when we first came out of this kid and this is what people did. This is what people did. He literally took a, a fit ball, like one of the big like balls that you can like use to do like crunches. And he ran from across the room toward his screen. It was for bowling with the, with controller in hand. And he jumped on the ball to go and bowl at the same time. He just threw the controller right through the television screen. And he's and his face was, 
like <laughs> like my parents are going to kill me. Like it was great. It was those those were all over YouTube things like that. So that was fun. Oh so man, so Super I don't Mario think we'll get sluggers. It. That was the baseball one, right? Yeah, I, I never, never played, played that, that one. Uh, comments on Mario and Sonic at the Olympic Games series. I'll be honest. I played the first one. The first one was really, honestly, the first one, if you play with other people, it was a lot of fun. I got the second one for Christmas, the winter one that they came out with, and it was just garbage. <laughs> They've done so it was, many. I know. They keep, they're still doing them, which is crazy, which the is new, crazy. The newest one, at least I think it's the newest one, was actually kind of cool because they had like 2D Olympics as well. So like they had like the 2D like oh NES really? olympics yeah <laughs> that's cool i remember there was one that was snoopy at the olympics on the nes and it was so difficult it was the hardest game in the entire world all all nintendo games were so hard like there was no save files and if you didn't play through that whole entire game you were starting over the next day and it was so difficult to go through <laughs> we sports tournament at the next in-person squad we'll see i we'll honestly see. I had a thought when I had my Wii U set up in here playing Skyward Sword. I had a thought of one day just playing bo- Wii Bowling one day on stream. Just chill stream, Wii Bowling. <laughs> It'd be so bad. What was I going to say? Oh, man. Um, shoot, what were we talking about a second ago? Shoot, what was it? I had something. Mario and Sonic at the Olympics? Yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. So I played like the first one or something, right? When they first started being a thing. And I just remember the gameplay not being great. And just, I remember thinking like, like Sonic should just instantly win the running. Like, like, there's, why is this a thing? Like, he should, and Mario should win all the jumping things. Like, it, should, it shouldn't be a contest. Oh, uh, Luigi. I mean, Luigi's got some hop, Luigi. Dude. But like, Luigi's I don't know, just hop. like... I just remember doing the running thing and being like, why is Sonic running so slow? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't get it. But if you enjoy them, I am glad. The DS version of the first. I never played the DS versions, to be completely honest. Oh, that's so. interesting. So, but yeah, we Wii Sports was a lot of fun in its time. Definitely a lot of fun in its time. Bowling and dinner. Apparently, we're bowling and dinner next time you come over, Sarah. Sounds good. We'll make we'll make you a turkey. Mm. It was a good turkey that Danielle made. Mm-hmm. Uh, I miss Thanksgiving. If you guys have uh, any any questions you want to ask, gaming, life related, whatever they may be, ask away. But uh, Boz, do you want to go ahead and uh, update us on uh, on your Switch since we've been talking about uh, Switch games a little bit, guys? <laughs> A Nintendo really sad, Switch. I was streaming the other day for about 30 minutes. And my Switch, I never saw this come up. I didn't even know this was a function. And I am glad it is a function. My game turned off and an error screen came up and it said, Error, your Nintendo Switch is overheated, going into sleep mode. And I felt my switch, and it was warm to the touch. I'll be honest, when it's on, it's pushing out some hot air. But my fan, my fan, uh, I think it's broken after 30 minutes of gaming. So I did a bit of a stress test that night. I played Super Smash Bros. for about an hour. played Super Smash Bros. the next morning for about an hour, and it held up. But it's definitely pushing out some hot air. And it made me really sad because I don't have the money for a switch. Like, like not not many people just have you know a few hundred dollars lying around, especially especially when there's the possibility of a new switch coming out. Right? I mean, this has been rumored since you know the switch came out, but it really that. looks like there's an actual rumor now, like an actual real thing that's happening. The the super the super the switch. Super switch. I, I can't it. wait. <laughs> Everybody's calling it the switch plus. I, I want the super. I switch. want the that's super I'm switch. Like. I'm gonna call it the super switch anyway. I'm going to call it the Super Switch as well, the double S. But anyways, I, I, I think, I, yeah, it's pushing out some hot air. Um, it smells not great when it's on. Um, the fan was selling, uh, sounding like an airplane f- uh, for a little while there. Um, and then the other night, it was making some odd noises. And I'm not going to lie. I'm wondering if that was the night that the fan really, really just started breaking down. And um, the fan doesn't make much noise anymore. It, it sounds like it's struggling. Like you can like hear it. It's like, 
And it's like, oh, hey, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So what I did was I went on and I, I looked up a couple of forums about it. And uh, somebody had, uh, apparently they sell Switch fans on the internet. So I went onto Amazon and it's being delivered today. It comes with a screwdriver, comes with some instructions. And uh, I don't trust myself. So Unworthy Seraph is going <laughs> to switch the fan out. I'm going to switch your fan. <laughs> Hey, <laughs> bad jokes, bad jokes. So it, it's been very sad. Um, it's been very sad. Why hasn't Nintendo made a Breath of the Wild co-op? Um, it will never happen. I mean, there, mods did. There were rumors that that's what they were going to do with the second one. I do you remember. Yeah. Or 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 maybe not that it would be co-op. Maybe it was just rumored that Zelda was Zelda a playable was be character playable, yeah. because she had a new haircut. Yeah, yeah, yeah that, that's what it was. I don't think it was actually co op. Literally, literally, when they showed the trailer, everywhere blew up. Reddit, every forum on the internet. Why is Zelda's, Zelda's hair the shorter? Play- Her hair is shorter. Playable character incoming. I'm like, oh goodness, don't don't change the game this much on me. Like like Breath of the Wild was enough change, and I loved it. You got to keep Link at the center of this game. He's just, he's iconic. He's so yeah. iconic. Yeah, but oh, uh, to answer the question, I I think it just doesn't really fit with uh, what Zelda's supposed to be. You know, there there yeah. are games um, that just fit better as a single player experience. When you make them co-op, there's a lot of compromises that you have to make. There's a lot of things that uh, you have to account for. I actually talked about this a lot in my. Uh, my um single identity message you know talking about multiplayer games versus single player games and there's a mm-hmm. place for both so there's pros uh, and cons to each I, I just don't think it's like what makes zelda zelda they've done it in tiny ways you know they had a uh, four swords back in the day Tri- and they Triforce, yep, Triforce heroes, heroes recently yeah, yeah, on the 3ds um yep. but a mainline game has never been co-op because i just don't really think yeah. that's and the, the and those two games are considered canon, but they're not sure. like they're uh, not well, four games, swords. Though. Four swords, you could argue, kind maybe of. was. It was but. Yeah, I never played it, but it's too expensive now for me to even go out to buy to play. I have to emulate that game if I was going to play it, and the better experiences with somebody else, anyways. Mm-hmm. Um, my wife came in with a good question. I have a question: When you have a huge decision to make and don't know which way God is calling you for discernment, what would you do when the choice has been made? Has to be made. Oh, it has to be made. That makes sense. Yeah. It's a really good question. It is. And it can be extremely confusing. I think I've talked with my wife about this probably 800 times. So, Sarah, why don't you give an sure. answer and I'll see if I have any any uh, wisdom and, and discernment that the Lord gives me during this, this moment. Sure, sure. <laughs> so, yeah, definitely a really, uh, really loaded question. I think it's one that a lot of people ask a lot of the times, you know, because we're all just trying to figure out what in the world is going on in life. Um, yeah. and where God, uh, might be leading us. Um, I mean, you know, you do all the, all the things you know to do, you know, pray fast, draw close to God, you know? Um, I think, I think we know those things a lot of the times and we, we do them. Um, I think sometimes we can be a little hesitant to what God may be trying to do in our life. I know I've been like that, uh, in the past with certain things. Yeah. Um, so I think a lot of the times we, we kind of fight where God might be leading us. We're trying to reason against it and be like, no, this couldn't be what he's leading me towards or whatever, for whatever reason. Um, but at least from what I've experienced, I think usually um, that's a sign that you're like going in the right direction, to be honest, when it's, when it's hard for you to understand uh, mm-hmm. and when it doesn't really make sense because um God is just so much bigger than we could even imagine. And like the way he works in our lives reflects that like they, the way he works, it doesn't, doesn't make sense. I don't expect something that God is going to be telling me. I don't expect it to make sense because I can't Mm. understand God. I don't expect to be able to understand the things he's trying to do in my life. Um, so I think that's where the difficulty comes in a lot of the times is we, we feel like we want to understand it fully before we like commit to it. Um, but sometimes we just have to trust that even if we don't understand it and it might not make any sense, we, we have to trust that that might be where God is leading us. Um, and like I said, um, 
you know, you you do the the basic things. You you pray, you fast, you really, really draw close to him. Because uh, if you don't do that, then you could very easily be acting on emotions and your own reasoning and things like that. So that's why it's really important to just make sure you're drawing close to him uh, when you're trying to make whatever decision uh, or figure out where he's calling you. Um, but once you do all that, you really just got to you got to go with what you feel in your spirit, even if it doesn't make any sense. And um, to, finally, to, to wrap up, as uh, I think the, the last part of the question uh, was when the choice has to be made. Uh, so if I'm interpreting that correctly, um, it seems like a, a situation where it's like, you know, you have to decide one way or the other. Right. Like you can't just sit yeah. in limbo forever. Um, and don't be afraid to take a step. I think don't be afraid to take a step, because like I said, if you're doing all those things that you should be doing, if you're praying and seeking God diligently, not just like, you know, uh, oh, I pray about it. Like, no, seek him diligently. If you do that and you take a step where you think he wants you to go, he's not going to let you fall. He's not going to let you fall. Even if you got it wrong, he's not going to let you fall. Yeah. If you do (laughs) fall, he picks you back up. Yeah. Like every single time. And I I think that's really good. And one thing I want to touch on that you said, like back, like, like when you first started talking about like God doing things, we don't understand why he's doing them or going in that direction. It just doesn't make any sense to us. Uh, I, I always take a look at different things in the Bible. So I take one of the biggest examples that I can think of is Gideon, right? Gideon, he was, uh, he had an army of people that was supposed to go up uh, against hundreds of thousands of people, right? And he had like four, a good 40,000 people, but it wasn't hundreds of thousands of people. And God said, nope, that's too much. And so God weeded out some more through uh, a, a test. And then, then I think he had, after that, he had a thousand people. And then it was like, God said, nope, that's too much as well. Gideon probably at this point is thinking, I, I, we ain't yo, yo, going to lose this battle. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm going to lose this battle. So then God weeds out more people through another test. And then he comes up with 300 people. It was a weird test. It was drinking water and how they drank the water out of, out of a, out of a lake or something. It was some strange, like they, they cupped it in their hands or if they just drank straight out of lake it's yeah, strange yeah. but anyway regardless of that so now he's got 300 people and hundreds of thousands of people that he's got to go against and uh this is probably where the stories of the 300 if you guys ever saw that movie and the stories about 300 this is probably where the idea came from but he went against the hundreds of thousands of people and won um it didn't make sense to gideon it didn't make sense to the people i'm sure that were going into the battle but the thing is is 300 people came out on top over hundreds of thousands of people so a lot of times in our lives we come up against something that seems insurmountable that we can't get over some weird obstacle or some decision that we have to make. And God doesn't, he he's, I've never seen God work in a way that it's a complete clear answer where it makes sense to us because if it makes sense to us, then we can give we ourselves figured it out we, on our own. Yeah. We could have <laughs> given God, we, we, we could have given the doctors the glory. We could give ourselves the glory. We could give anybody the glory, but God, because we understood it and we understand how to do it. However, when God does something that's remarkable and it's a miracle in our life and he does something that only he can do, the only thing that we can do is give God the glory. And so that's what God does in our lives to help us draw closer to him. And I think the last thing you touched on, which was something I was going to say before you even said it, but you took it a lot of times. I come to a place in my life where I'm reading my Bible and praying and doing well with it, but I can I can see that my connection with God is not really great. You can just be going through the motions, you know? Yeah, and I think I do go through the motions sometimes. I think everybody has that point mm-hmm. in their life where they go through Multiple the motions. Multiple points in, and, their, in their life. <laughs> yeah, and – and so, so my whole thing is, is like, if we're just going through the motions or even, even if you're not going through the motions, I, I always, I always, I, I don't love it, but I love when people come to me and they say, well, I'm asking God for an answer. Well, how much have you prayed about it? Well, I prayed about it last week. Okay. What have you done in the meantime? Like, are you, are you connecting with him? Not really. Try reading your Bible every day. Try praying to him every day. And they come back to me two weeks later with the same problem. Well, did you try these things? Well, no. Well, that's probably why you're still having a problem getting an answer from God. Because if we're not continuing, like we only, sometimes we get to this place in our life where we only go to God with our problems. We only go to him when we need him. And I think that we need to be connecting with God every single day on a daily basis, on our hands and knees. We need to be continually, um, you know, praying. 
reading his word, really diving deep into his word. And I'm not saying you're going to get something out of the Bible every single time you open it. Mm-hmm. Should we? Probably, but we are humans <laughs> and we have, we have issues and, and sometimes things like you're just that. reading through numbers, you know, <sighs> if you guys are doing the whole read the Bible, Genesis through revelation, I pray for you when you get to Leviticus through Deuteronomy, it's just a struggle bus. But anyways, I really think that when you're diving deep into God's word and you're really praying and you're really in a good connection, he will show you a vision. He will give you clarity. He will help you. And like Sarah said, don't be afraid to take that step because sometimes, you know, you just got to take it. And God, because you're reaching out to him, like, it's kind of like the the old saying that, you know, um, what was it? Uh, if you do your best, God will do the rest, that type of thing. Like God's going to lead you in the right direction. And even if you take the wrong step, he'll guide that footstep so that he makes it the right step. Like I've made wrong steps in my life. When I was yeah. asked to be a part of God Squad Church, well, it wasn't God Squad Church yet because there's no church. I said no. Well, because you wanted to think it was about a little, it. And it's pray a little different. It. Like, <laughs> That's the thing. I had been praying about it for seven years That's and true. I didn't yeah, know that I was praying about it for seven years until four years after I started working for God Squad Church. So uh, really, really, I, I made a wrong step. And then God was like, eh, 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 no, you're, you're going to be doing this. And you're going to be doing this for a lot longer than you think. And like, so it, it, it's, it's always something like that. And so I, I, I do think that if we have a good relationship with God and also if it doesn't make sense, it's probably more than likely you're going in the right direction because mm-hmm. that's God doesn't, yeah. his answers for me have never made sense. If it did, it would be under my own will, my own doing and things like that. So yeah. I hope Co- that answers your question. Yeah. A couple more things I wanted to touch on uh, before we move on, uh, unless we think of another direction to take it. Uh, but one, um, I want to talk about uh, like resistance, um, you know, as far as like when you choose a direction and you start going in it, you come up against like resistance or obstacles of whatever it may be. I think a lot of us can easily jump to the conclusion that like, usually that means that, uh, oh, maybe this isn't what God wanted because it's not working out. Um, And maybe that's true. You know, that's where the difficulty comes in. That's where it's really important for you to be really, really seeking God so that you can uh, really discern what he's trying to tell you. Um, But resistance is not a sign that you need to turn back all the time. It is not always a sign to turn around and try something different. Resistance can often mean that you are going in the right direction but you need to trust God that it's going to work out anyway. I've met so much resistance with things that God has been trying to do in my life. You sure have. So have I. Look, Techie in the chat was like, when's the next Seraph sermon? It's next month. All right. Y'all best prepare yourselves. All right. But um, (laughs) next next sermon. (laughs) Um, um, Where are they going? Yeah. So resistance is uh not um not always a sign to turn back it's not always a sign that you're not going in the direction that god wants you to be going in uh god uses resistance to uh force us to rely on him to grow us all sorts of things um so don't be afraid of resistance don't take it as a sign that you're going in the wrong direction uh just go off of whatever um whatever you feel like god is leading you to do and then uh the second thing i wanted to mention uh a uh, comment from uh, Mr. Scrubs made me made me think about it. He said, uh, "You can't mess up God's will," and that's so comforting. Uh, that's mm. completely right. Um, but I also think we can uh, fall into a a dangerous thought when we think like that sometimes. And I'm not saying, Mr. Scrubs, that you are thinking like this. I just want to say this for uh, those who who may not uh, may not have a as good an understanding of it as some of us do. Um, And that's the fact that I don't think we should get so comfortable with that, that we lose value and uh, importance in seeking God on things. Mm. So we don't want to get so comfortable in the fact, oh, well, I can't mess it up, you know, so I I just do whatever, you know, oh, if I get it wrong, I might as well not pray for it because if I get it wrong, you know, oh, well, it's already going to happen anyway. If you're in that (laughs) mindset, stop. (laughs) stop that is not where you want to be because because then you're making decisions on your own you know and when you're making decisions on your own you're not you're not looking to god so 
yeah, you can't mess up God's will. But if you're acting on your own, life is going to be a lot harder. Yeah. And it, it's and, and, not, it's just, it's not what you want to do. <laughs> and and there's a verse in the Bible. I can't remember exactly where it is right now, but it says, I think it's in the book of John. It says, if you're praying according to God's will, like you already know what the answer is, but we don't always know what God's will is. So a lot of times when I pray, and I know a lot of people say like, like there's two different kinds of praying for God's will. There's like, I pray for healing. If it be your will, God. And I think there's, 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 some there's validity some, to that. It, there's validity to it for sure. Mm-hmm. Um, I think a lot of times there's validity to it when you really want God's will to happen. But then there's the other side of it. Well, if you don't have it happen, at least I prayed for the right thing. Like honestly, when I pray, and this is a mindset I got to get myself out of, I shouldn't pray thinking that I need to be right about my prayer. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I, like. Like we, we, if it be your will, just so that I can have comfort that if I prayed about it, that I'm right. And that God did it the way that I asked, like just to do it that way. Like we shouldn't be praying that way anyways, but regardless of that. Yeah. I think that that's, that's really good uh, to go over Sarah. But yeah. And and on on that note, at the same time, uh, completely agree with what you're saying. But again, I think there's always that balance of like, we, we also shouldn't get so comfortable in asking God for things that we expect things from him. And we always expect yeah. him to answer prayers in, in the way that we want him to. So yeah, we're not praying if it be your will, we're praying God do this, but then we also can't get mad when he doesn't like, we can't be and, frustrated when he doesn't. To, <laughs> to all those people out there that I talk to on, on a weekly basis, monthly basis, whoever, whoever I talk to for community care, Stop saying that God isn't answering your prayers. Sometimes he says no. <laughs> it stinks. It's like when you're at the grocery store and you're standing in line and you're sitting there and you want the candy bar when you're at the register and you you reach for the candy bar and your mom goes, no. You sit there and you try to sneak it again on the register belt and she says no and puts it back like you, you continue doing it over and over and over and over again. You're not going to go home and say to your dad, well, she didn't give me an answer. No, you're going to go home and you're going to say she said no. Like that's an answer. And it, it frustrates me when people say God didn't answer my prayer. Well, he did, but it was no. And and yeah. it, it, oh, man, and, I love you. I love all of you out there. And, and I had to come to an understanding of this myself. Like there's a lot of times I'm like, well, God didn't answer my prayer. Well, he did. It just didn't, it just, he answered it in a way that I didn't expect. And so there's, yes, there's a no, yes, there is a wait, but he always yeah, answers. That's what I was he's always say. listening. It's not, he, he's never going to just be silent on the subject. He's never going to just not answer you. And sometimes, sometimes it's a long wait, unfortunately, mm-hmm. and, it, and it hurts sometimes and it takes a long time. It takes a lot of patience, but yeah, I, I, I just, I, I never understood when people say, well, God didn't answer my prayer. Well, he did. He just said no. <laughs> like he went the other way that you didn't want. So that's okay. Yeah. That's okay though. So I'm really glad yeah. you mentioned the weight. I was gonna I was gonna touch on that. Uh because lots of times the weight can it, that can feel like he's not answering you for sure. Um mm-hmm. where it doesn't feel like a no, but it doesn't feel like a yes. Um and nothing's really happening. Um I think that's the hardest thing to figure out when it's a weight. Cause he usually doesn't say weight or indicate that it's a weight. Yeah, it's just that you need to keep trusting him. And but just know that even if it doesn't feel like you have a clear answer, like like Boz was saying, that doesn't mean your prayers aren't being answered. It doesn't mean he's not doing something in your life. It just means you can't see it yet. Yeah, you can't see it yet. I uh, I have a great example of that for many of you know, my wife has had a lot of health issues over time. And there's still some things that we're definitely working on. Things are some, in areas better. Some things are worse. And and so, but the thing is, is there, it was really, really bad like four years ago, four or five years ago or so. I was praying to God for healing. And I didn't recognize that he was saying wait, but the reason the wait was such a gradual healing that I'd even notice the healing. Mm-hmm. It was, it was little by little things were happening that seemed bad, but they were getting better. 
So, and I didn't see it. And so a lot of times God was saying, wait, but I didn't see it because it was so little and it was so gradual. But after the months and the years went by, I started to see a difference. And when I look back from where she's at today, sure, there's still issues. Sure. There's still things that are going on that haven't been fully resolved. But when I look back on where we were four years ago, when she was in a wheelchair and the doctors were telling her that she was never going to be able to walk again. My wife can get up and she can walk all around the house all she wants. And the reason why is because the doctors were wrong and God had a gradual plan for her to be able to be healed. And I didn't see it, but you know, and and the thing, and I've told, I've told the community this before, the thing that got her out of the wheelchair, and this is going to sound super weird. It was, it was a seizure. She had a seizure in 2017 and, uh, and uh, she she was in the hospital and she got up and walked from the hospital bed to the bathroom. And I was perplexed. I was so confused. Then she walked back to the bed and I was like, how did you do that? And she said, what do you mean? I said, you just walked like she didn't need a wheelchair again from that from that moment forward. And so it, 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 it it's scary and it doesn't make sense that she just said right there. But the thing is, is Man, it was so gradual, and I'm so happy that God brought us through it and didn't just take us out of the the situation. And that's another sermon in and of itself. I'm not going to go into that, but man. All of this. Such good. Thank you. Thank you. My wife. She came with the loaded questions with the loaded coming question. in. It was great. We, 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 did, we had no idea what we were going to talk about <laughs> today. That was great. It was a great, great question. I think with all of it, with all of it, there there's a balance, you know? Um, yeah. And I think that's... um. That's just, that's just God, you know, you know, how do you balance God's sovereignty with, with our free will? You know, we could talk about that for forever and still not have an answer. (laughs) Like everything, everything, everything is a careful, careful balance. Yeah. And it's so beautiful. It's so beautiful when you, when you look at it that way and you look at, um, just how, how uh, not complicated, but like carefully tuned everything is and everything should be like there. There's always two sides to it. There's always Mm -hmm. two sides. There's, there's always that balance that you have to find. Um, And you're not going to get there unless you, you look at, you look at both sides and it's, I, I could just go and go and go. (laughs) But <laughs> yeah, for sure. No, that that's really good. So yeah, Sparkle Task, Danny, my wife. Coming Drop a clutch. follow. She doesn't stream. Um, <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Gonna get like ten follow follow <laughs> notifications. Um, <laughs> that's really good though. Yeah. So uh, yeah, it's all, it's almost time for us to end. Just uh, about. Yeah. Super sad. I had a good time with this. Cute. And honestly, and I was thinking about this and, and Sarah, if we could probably talk about it live right now a little bit, we're probably going to have to change some of the formatting that we do. Uh, a lot of times we told you guys, we don't necessarily read the chat. And the reason why is for the people that are on podcasts, we don't want them to miss out on the content. I think that's still true to an extent. However, because it's going to be changing to four thirty Eastern standard time on Fridays and it's got not, I don't want to say the Oak talk has a different purpose, but it does have a different purpose, right? It's reconnecting mm-hmm. for the community as a whole as well. And so we might have to revamp, look at what we're going to do going to do about it. And maybe we can meet later this week, Seraph, about what we want to do. Because there might be times that we do need to look at the chat. And to be completely honest, this was a fun yoke talk, like yeah. like being able to connect with the chat. And that's what you guys know me in my stream. I hate playing games where I can't look at the chat all the time. Like I always love talk. That's my favorite part about streaming is talking with the chat, talking with everybody and stuff like that. And so, um, so yeah, it might be something we have to relook at and not necessarily that we'll always look at the chat, but mm-hmm. yeah. do, do, do times. Maybe find that balance. Find that, find that balance, balance, guys. You know, Perfectly balanced, as all things should be. Like your breakfast. Yes. A healthy, balanced breakfast. (laughs) I was like, what are you trying to say about my breakfast? (laughs) 
I like took it very personally and I wasn't sure. No, no. I I always love those commercials. It's got like, it's like frosted flakes, a part of a complete and balanced breakfast. And it shows like the frosted flakes. It shows it with milk in the bowl. It shows like fruit next to the bowl. Then it shows a glass of orange juice. Then it has the box behind it of the frosted flakes. And you're like, that is a balanced breakfast. But I'll be completely honest. Who eats frosted flakes with an apple and a banana and drinks a glass of orange juice? Nobody. They eat the frosted flakes and they have the orange juice and that's it. They don't even drink the milk in the bowl half the time because it just warm milk is just nasty. So I got nothing against and, and then and then Reese's peanut butter puffs part of a healthy balanced breakfast. Hey, nothing. There ain't nothing healthy about Reese's peanut butter puffs. My favorite cereal in the world, but listen, there ain't nothing healthy when, about that. When in reality, Cocoa Pebbles. You're, you're only eating frosted flakes at midnight. <laughs> That's so true, though. <laughs> That's so true. <laughs> you know how many times my wife has woken me up at three o'clock in the morning, get me a get her a oh, bowl of Cheerios. Goodness. <laughs> it happens. It happens. Uh, they are oh, not gluten free. And she can't have bananas or an orange juice. Feels bad. You can't have a banana? Oh, she doesn't process bananas well. And orange juice is as like uh, citrus and Mm. she can't have citrus. Yeah, I had to cut down on my orange juice too because acid reflux. Really? Oh, yeah. That will do it to you. But I think my acid reflux has been a lot better. So I've been trying to do a lot of things. That's good. I yeah. Cu- take I sauce down, out. Take orange juice out. Take all the stitches out. It feels bad. Hey. It, well, I mean, you gotta do it. Yeah, but at least your acid reflux feels good. Yeah, it's a lot better. But, you know, or I'll still I enjoy it would be there is every one, once in a while, I'm sure. It's not like I'm never going to drink orange juice again, but I don't yeah, think just, uh, doing it daily was uh, what's good for me, unfortunately. But it's delicious. Yeah, it is good. I, 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 I like orange juice, but not as much as you do. Not as much as you do. But apparently you like the store brand better yeah, than the- Yeah, uh, I was just thing. about to mention that. Uh, what do you know? SquadCon, when we did the save a, save a little bit of money versus brand. I, I like the other. I picked the one See, I like best. Okay, so, so here's the thing. I had my idea for SquadCon for the generic versus the brand. It was my idea that came up with it. And my thought and what I had said was we do sodas, generic soda, like, you know, or like, like Dr. Thunder and Dr. Pepper, right? You got- got the store brand dr thunder and you got dr pepper the name brand and you got to choose which one is which and you can even do like you can even like put in pepsi products so you can do coke pepsi and like cola from sam's club or something like that right so then you got three to choose from that was what i had thought but then we started doing things like like, do you know how many Chewy bars I've had in my entire life and they gave me the Chewy bars okay i i i looked at it and i knew which one was the Chewy bar I knew which one was this was the name brand because I, I ate it through the cup and knew exactly because I, I I didn't even need to taste it. So you're not saying the same thing couldn't happen with the sodas. I wouldn't throw the cup. I, I'll be honest. I, I did the soda one one time. It's really difficult. You can't see the difference. They're all they're They're all black. Like they're, they're all just a dark color, mm-hmm. like that dark caramel color that they put in sodas and uh you have you have you have i I got the coke the pepsi and a sam's club mix up i thought the sam's club was the um was the coke i thought the coke was the pepsi and the pepsi was the sam's club and i've had them all multiple times and uh messed them all up so (laughs) very nice but i do think uh this bonus episode has run its course it has but indeed before we end, I'll tell you guys what I'm up to real quick. Um, so uh, for my stream, I'm still streaming Immortals Phoenix Rising. Uh, once when, my fan when his gets switch is when, not when dying, my switch fan is not dying. But I did move on to the next game that I was going to start after Immortals Phoenix Rising, which was Final Fantasy IV, an old retro game. I miss playing the retro games in my stream, so I started playing that the other day and enjoying that. Uh, got through a decent uh, couple couple hours of it, I think. So excited to continue on with that game. Um, this cup of Sam's <laughs> just Club. That. Oh wait, <laughs> I'm done. I'm done. <laughs> Anyways, um, so I've been playing that, and um, I don't know what I'm going to do after that, honestly, for my stream. But I also Yo, I didn't like. I just had last a night great was, idea. Sorry. What? what if we put the chat right here in the middle of the screen on Yoke Talk? If you can make it work, that would be cool. 
Well, not right now, but like for the future. Well, not right now. I'm just talking about future. That would be, be neat. Be sick. That would be sick. Be sick. Um, <laughs> and then, uh, and then the other game that I've been playing, I'm still playing, uh, is Overwatch. And I'll give you a short spectacle on what's going on there. Uh, give you an inside scoop. So apparently, when you play Overwatch and you play Zenyatta and you're stuck in Elo Hell, um, <laughs> e- everybody hates you. You yeah. can get fifteen thousand healing. And everybody's like, you should have played somebody that has more healing, Zen. Okay, play Lucio, get 13,000 healing, and everybody loves you. So I started maining Lucio just out of spite of everybody else that doesn't like me playing Zen. That's literally what I'm doing now. So I'm playing Lucio from now on. I'm a Lucio main. I've changed. I changed last night. Not even lying. People hated it when I played Zen. I, 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 can, I can click heads. I can play Lucio. Can't click heads, but hey, I can boot people off the maps every once in a while. You get that's the same amount want. of healing. That's all they want. Get the same amount of healing. And they're like, oh, that's so cool. You played Lucio. Oh, that's so cool. You're playing like, you know, Reaper. Okay. Play somebody with more damage. Mm. I don't say that to anybody. I just say good game, you know? Even when I lose, good game. No, it wasn't. We lost. It's still a good game. Like, I don't know. It feels bad, guys. <laughs> Gotta get the toxicity and Perfect. assault out of the video game world. We need the balance, you know? The wins don't feel good <laughs> unless you lose. <laughs> I need the balance. The balance. It all comes back to the <laughs> it all comes back balance to the balance, balance. guys. Balance it's all about, it's, it's it all all about your there. breakfast. It all starts with it your breakfast. If your if your breakfast is not balanced, you know what I've been doing lately. Day, your whole day is unbalanced. You know what I've been doing lately for breakfast is avocado on a bagel with salt and pepper. That's very weird. It's really good. I like cream cheese on a bagel. Eh. Avocado. I've been doing, I've been doing water for breakfast lately. On a toast, and bagel. L- toasted bagel. <laughs> doing water for breakfast and lunch lately. Mm, delicious. <laughs> oh man, I love water. But anyways, good times, good times, good times, good times, guys. That's gonna wrap it up today for our bonus episode of Yoke Talk. Thank you so much for joining. It's been fantastic. Uh, our new time, as we've been saying, is 4.30 p.m. Eastern on Fridays. So there will yep. be another episode later this week on Friday, 4.30 p.m. Eastern, um, where we will be doing a normal Yoke Talk, where we'll be talking about all the gaming news that is going to get get announced later today, right after the stream goes offline. Um, Wait, <laughs> I'm checking right now. Let's check. It's 102. Let's check. Let's look to, today is going to be the day. There's nothing. Octopath Traveler, formerly a Switch console exclusive, joins the Xbox Pass. It's not huge, but that's a that's, that's, a, that's a deal. That's a deal. Xbox is buying everybody out. I'm telling mm-hmm. you. Uh, Jade Raymond's Haven Entertainment Studios to develop a new IP for PlayStation. Like these things happen, guys. This is actually things we could talk about. Rainbow Six Siege, Crimson Heist, Battle Pass trailer. I really don't care about that, but it's a new Rainbow Six thing com- coming out, like they do every month. So you know all the things happen every tuesday afternoon that's it that's it but look forward to seeing you guys there at our new time so be sure to change yes. that on your schedules you know if you got yoked out yoke town yo let's make, yoke it, town. Let's make it yoke town yo, yo in rust, I don't play rust. <laughs> we should have made the yoke town in rust that would have been so Dang good it. oh the yoke town the wave is gone it's too late the wave is gone we'll have to we'll have to wait for your your or my new IP to come out that we were talking about earlier for Yoke Town. We're gonna we make it, a game called Yoke Town. Do it Yoke in Valheim. To have Yoke Town, Yoke Town, and Valheim. I don't have it, and I don't want. No, I don't want to have it. I don't really want it. Anyway. <laughs> looks, it looks okay. It looks, it looks, it looks all right. I probably enjoy it, but it looks, it looks not it right looks now. Like Rust. Not right now. <laughs> oh man! But hope you all have a fantastic rest of your week. We'll see you on Friday. Boss, do you have any uh, closing thoughts? uh i don't think so excellent excellent love all you out there yeah. and we'll see you guys this friday 4 30 eastern standard time it's gonna be great fare thee well friends thank you guys for your questions they were they were great fantastic so bye